Yeah, our run for circularity is going ahead and there's more to come. I'm really happy to introduce Javier from the brand EcoAlf to you. EcoAlf is known for its various facets of recycling concerning the materials they're using. So from fishernets to coffee to tires and uh, PET bottles, they create a wonderful collection, really fashionable collection, and the brand is very well known and recognized for their innovative approach. So Javier <laughs> will let us know more about his brand. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, uh, good afternoon. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to summarize in 15 minutes what is EcoAlf, uh, so I'll be very quick. Basically, EcoAlf was, uh, the idea was born in 2010 with the idea of creating a truly sustainable fashion company. And we believe the most sustainable thing to do was not to keep on using natural resources, so recycling could be a solution. We were able to make like a new generation of recycled products with the same quality and design as the best non-recycled. Basically, our vision is to stop using natural resources, and our mission is create that generation of products where if I don't tell you to recycle, you would never know. Some people have the idea that recycling is like getting the old blanket of your grandmother to make a backpack. Okay, that's not EcoAlf. EcoAlf is about technology, it's about R&D, it's about innovation, okay? Basically, what do we recycle? We recycle different types of materials. We recycle a lot of discarded fishing nets, a lot of plastic bottles, used tires, post-consumer coffee, post-consumer and post-industrial cotton, and um, wool. Okay, basically, I mean, you've, most of you have been here for long, and, and uh, you know a lot of things already about recycling plastic bottles, which is polyester, so I'm not going to be very, very um, extensive. Basically, the company, the problem is that when we started with the idea of the company in 2010, we couldn't find uh, really cool recycled fabrics. So, uh, Ecolf started developing fabrics in 2011, and we have developed over 250 different fabrics in this year. The company was finally launched in 2013. Okay, everything you see here is all fabrics developed by us. Basically, we say that we need around 60 plastic bottles per every yard of uh, Ecolf fabric we, we use. Okay. Uh, used tires. This is a project we started in Spain. So basically, we wanted to start we wanted to do for the outsoles of our sneakers, and we contacted with this company uh, in Spain, which is responsible for all the uh, used tires, and we started a project which was amazing. It was nearly 22 months of R&D with the Technological Center of the North of Spain in Vitoria, and, uh, and we made this flip-flop, which looks simple, but it was, it's received a lot of innovation prices because we haven't used any conglomerates, no glues to put it together. It's, um, it's a huge R&D program. Uh, coffee, okay, we have a partner uh, who has an agreement with this big cafeteria group. We collect the coffee every morning, the humid compound, after you drink the coffee. We dry it out, we convert it into powder, and we mix it with polymers of plastic bottles. Okay, what do we achieve with that? We achieve that the coffee has a lot of natural properties, so you don't have to give it through chemicals to the fabrics. Okay, it's out of control, it's UV protection, it's fast drying. So through the coffee, you can give all those properties to the uh, uh, fabrics. Okay, all these fabrics are made from used coffee. Uh, fishing nets. Well, uh, probably a lot of you know that that's, uh, unfortunately, fishermen have been changing, uh, well, they need to change the nets every five, six years. Unfortunately, before, they had to pay to leave those nets in the ports. Those nets are huge, they're kilometers long. So uh, they have been throwing them to the bottom of the ocean. Okay, it's, uh, sometimes they say they miss them, they lose them, but the truth is that there's, too many to have been lost, okay? Only in the North Sea, the last study showed there was over 20,000 nets in the bottom of the ocean, okay? And a big percentage of those nets are made of nylon six, which is the best quality nylon you can get in the world, okay? Basically, for you to get an idea from the petrol to one of these fabrics, it would be 17 chemical steps. From an old fishing net to that same fabric, it's seven. That's why they're so much safe in water, energy, and emissions, because it's half of the steps. Cotton, uh, and wool. Well, cotton is probably where we're investing more resources in the company. Um, unfortunately, cotton is not very sustainable. 
As you know, you need 2,500 liters per kilo of cotton you produce. I don't know if you've seen the documentary about the, the uh, RLC, but it's really scary how the RLC dried out in two years when the Russians decided to give water to the cotton plantations in Kazakhstan. It dried out in less than two years. Okay? And the problem is that a lot of cotton plantations are in countries like Africa, India, where they need that water for their own survival. And the problem is that we're taking that water away and we're giving it back full of chemicals. So it's a huge problem. Okay, what's the good thing about recycling cotton? We get the leftovers, you throw away to the waste or the leftovers for the factories. We mix it together and we get a very short and even an unstable thread. So it's not easy to work with, it's very unstable. I mean, and, and you produce all that recycled cotton, machines work like much slower speed. But the good thing is that it's a mechanical process. So you, you need zero water, which is very good. The only problem is that right now, we're still not able to make qualities for women, like very transparent, very thin qualities. The yarn is too thick. So uh, we need to keep on investing. OK, and the wool. Well, the wool is probably the easiest thing to recycle. It's been recycled since the 19th century. There's even a, a city in Italy called Prato, which is famous for recycling wool. OK. And now I'm going to talk about upcycling the ocean. This is probably our most ambitious project. And this started because we were recycling all the nets in Korea. And one day, the government of the Pai Basque in Spain said, why don't you recycle the nets in Spain? And we have a lot of nets, there's a lot of fishermen. So uh, OK, he said, OK, let's start. The problem is not the nets. Unfortunately, waste is everywhere in the world. What we need is to find a technology to convert those, that waste into what we need. And so we have to start again in Spain and see if we're able to do it. No? But one day I was in a port, and one fisherman said, Javier, you should come out and fish with me and see how much waste gets caught in the nets when we go out fishing. So I went out fishing with him, and I discovered that it's true. Every time you pull up the nets, it's full of waste. So we decided, OK, let's do something. Um, so we started reading, and we, 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 we got to the conclusion that 80% of the waste is in the bottom of the ocean. It's not on the surface. How could we get that waste out of the ocean? OK, through the fishermen, through the trolling boats. Uh, so we said, OK, where are more trolling boats in Spain, Alicante? We went there. We convinced 160 fishermen to let us put a little container in their boats. So every time that waste, instead of throwing it back to the ocean, they would put it in the container, take it to the ports. We collect it every 10 days. And then we separate all the different types of waste and then finally convert it into yarn. OK, right now we have two programs. We have one in Spain, which started only um, in that part, in Alicante, Valencia, and Castellón. Right now, we have um, about 52 ports, over 700 boats, and nearly 3,000 fishermen involved. Okay? By the end of the year, we will have all Spain. I mean, this, all that part in the north is already finished, and we're halfway in the south. So I think by May, we will have all the coast of Spain and over 3,000 fishermen involved. This year, we will be taking around 250 tons out of the bottom of the ocean, which is quite scary. Okay? And now we've started another project in Spain, which is very interesting, which is in the south, because unfortunately, 70% of that waste is coming through the rivers. It's not people who go sailing and start throwing the bottles. Basically, it comes through the rivers. Every time it rains, you get the ocean. You see the fishermen. They tell you they get tons of waste. OK, so we need to start working. How can we have, uh, start working to avoid that waste getting into the ocean? And then uh, we were contacted by the government of Thailand. I was giving a conference one day, and there was somebody from the government of Thailand said, would you help us replicate this project in Thailand? And uh, so finally, we decided, yes, we, 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 we closed this agreement with the uh, Ministry of Tourism and Environment of Thailand. And, and we started, we're operating in four areas, which is Rayon, Phuket, Samui, and Kotao. Basically, the problem there is huge. You cannot imagine uh, the plastic problem they had. Uh, unfortunately, I've had the, the, the possibility to visit many places. And two weeks ago in Samui, there was, I mean, they, they have a landfill with over 450,000 tons of waste and 500 more every day. The problem is that landfill is like 800 meters from the ocean on a hill. Every time the monsoon season comes and all the rain it comes out. So from Kotao, the other day, there was the currents bringing the plastic to the coral reef. And there was a sort of motorway of nearly 12 miles of three meters long going all the way to Mainland. It's a huge problem. We made also the difference in Thailand is that we're not only going to be working with uh, fishermen, but also working with the diving community, which is huge. We made a trial test in Phuket last uh, July. 
And in one day, 1,000 fishermen, 7.5 tons of waste. It was 7.5 kilos average waste per diver. So uh, you can imagine what is down there, okay? And we're also working with the uh, uh, beach cleaning associations, which are very big, especially one made by two amazing girls, which is called Trash Hero. And uh, they started through WhatsApp, and now there are over 5,000 volunteers which dedicate two hours per week to clean the beaches. Okay? And basically, we start again, because EcoAlf never moves the waste around. So if we recycle the used tires in Spain, we make the flip-flops in Spain. If we recycle the nets in Korea, then we make the, everything with Korea. We recycle. So every time we start a project, um, where we get the waste, we do till the final product. Okay? We don't move the waste around. So in Thailand, we have to start again finding the partners to create the polymer, to create the yarn, to create the fabric, and to create the final product, okay? All these sneakers are made from, already from, uh, from the yarn of the bottom of the ocean of Spain, okay? Um, um, and this is how we work. Basically, fishermen collecting those containers, there's those containers in the ports, we collect them every 10 days. We separate it because you get a lot of aluminum, you get a lot of glass, you get a lot of polypropylene, you get a lot of polyethylene, you get PT bottles. PT bottles right now, it's no more than 9% of what we get out. But all the different materials go to the different recycling facilities. So right now, 84% of what we get out is used again. There's only like 16% we're not able to use again. Sometimes it's a Nike shoe or a piece of cushion, or, which is very complicated. Okay? But the rest is reused. The glass, the aluminum, the uh, polyethylene, everything. Okay? And then with the plastic bottles, we stock them, we convert them into, um, into polymer, yarn, fabric, and product, all made in Spain in less than 200 kilometers. Okay, I'm going to put a short video, it's one minute long, and it's, you can see what's going on with the fishermen. A strange and harmful species has colonized our oceans, marine debris. Every year, more than six million tons of garbage is thrown into the sea, silently polluting every square meter of the ocean and killing even more marine species than climate change affects. If we continue polluting at this rate, the amount of debris in the ocean will duplicate in the next 10 years. We have to change the way we interact with nature and find solutions that ensure our planet's life expectancy. At EcoAlf, we try to do things differently which is the reason why we founded Upcycling the Oceans, a revolutionary project meant to be carried out also in other parts of the world. Its main goal, collecting the trash that's destroying the Mediterranean Sea and turning it into top quality thread. To do this, we're relying on years of intensive research and development, as well as the support of those that are more familiar with these waters, the fishermen of Levante. Together, we recover one ton of trash per day, giving plastic a second chance. Otherwise, it would continue to float in the ocean for an unimaginable amount of years, destroying our ecosystem. There is too much at stake to continue to stand by and do nothing about it. This is the reason why we created the EcoAlf Foundation. Apart from cleaning marine debris, we also raise public awareness on the abuse of natural resources. We can't keep on living on this planet as if we had another one to go to. And then another short video, which is one minute, which explains, okay, what do we do with that waste? Those were the first plastic bottles we got from the bottom of the ocean. The problem is that the, the quality of our yarn depends on the quality of the waste, and the level of contamination of the waste in the bottom of the ocean is like four times the one we get at land. Much more dirty. the process. These are the plastic bottles. We take the cups out, we convert them into flakes, polymer, yarn, and fabric.
Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. And basically, I'm finished. And this is our new Berlin store, which we opened one month and a half ago, and uh, which is in Mitte. So you're all invited to go and see and touch our products. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Fabio.